Hey guys, welcome to my very first Juniper Lightboard video. And what better way to kick things off than to talk about one of my very favorite topics, and that's Juniper Fundamentals. Now you can rest assured, I'll be doing additional videos on advanced topics such as eVPN, data center architecture, MPLS, multicast, class of service, I'll be covering it all. But I really wanted to provide a resource for those who are brand new to Junos to come and watch a couple of videos and to, and to learn some of the fundamental concepts around Junos. So with that, what we're gonna start with one of the most fundamental concepts in the Juniper operating system is this separation between the control plane and the forwarding plane. And this is truly one of the most important concepts to grasp because it equally applies whether we're dealing with the routing platforms, the switching platforms, uh, or the firewall platforms. They all share this common design goal of clean separation between the control plane and the forwarding plane. So let's start with the control plane. That's this uh, box that is, exists up here above this dotted line. The control plane consists of uh, a process or a piece of uh, hardware that essentially is what's known as our routing engine. The routing engine can be called the brains of the operation. And essentially, it's, it's the brains of the operation because it's responsible for maintaining things like our routing tables, our bridging tables, our forwarding tables. And also, whenever we log into the CLI, we're logging into the Junos operating system that exists up here. Um, the routing engine is monitoring things like fans, alarms, uh, temperature controls. It truly is the brains of the operation right here. So if we're running BGP or OSPF, these are all routing protocols that I'll be covering it a little bit later. All of those things actually exist up here in the routing engine. Now, if the routing engine is the brains of the operation, what we have down below is what's known as the forwarding plane. And the forwarding plane is essentially the bronze of the, oper of the operation. So with the forwarding plane, what we see down here is we have a different set of uh, hardware, which is essentially known as our packet forwarding engine. Now the packet forwarding engine is essentially responsible for forwarding packets, and it does that at really, really great speed. So essentially, packets come in, they get forwarded out. The, the packet forwarding engine is also responsible for receiving the forwarding table from the routing engine so that it can essentially operate on those packets as they come in and come out. Now there's other types of packets like exception packets and those types of things. I'll be covering those in a little bit later. But essentially this architecture where we separate routing engine uh, and packet forwarding engine or what we would say control plane versus forwarding plane is really the most fundamental concept to master. Again, a routing engine is the brains of the operation, responsible for maintaining all of our routing tables and so on and so forth. The packet forwarding engine is really just uh, an unintelligent piece of hardware and all its main responsibility to do is to just simply forward packets and to forward them as quickly as possible. Now, this might not seem like a really fundamentally different architecture. If you look at most of the other uh, router vendors that are out there, they all employ a very similar architecture to this. Um, but if you think back to 1998, when the Juniper M40 flagship product was first released, this, this was the first time that any networking vendor had ever done this. Um, before Juniper introduced this clean separation between routing plane and, and forwarding plane, or control plane and forwarding plane, everybody was doing something that's known as process switching. And with process switching, you had a router and you had interfaces and essentially you had a single CPU in that router. Uh, and that single CPU was responsible for both managing the router as well as forwarding packets. So what would happen is if you had a high degree of um, uh, bandwidth or you had a lot of packets coming through the box where there was a heavy traffic utilization, you might see that routing protocol updates might get dropped or other types of anomalies might happen because you had a single CPU that was dedicated to all of these functions. And so this design here, when Juniper came out with this, uh, this architecture with the flagship M40 in 1998, was really fundamentally different from what anybody else was doing. It was really a game changer and it's what allowed Juniper uh, to really put themselves on the map inside the service provider arena because of this architecture, they were able to get really, really fast performance. Now, before I close this video, I will say this architecture also lends itself to doing some other really cool things like in-service software upgrades, 
where we can basically upgrade the software on the routing engine um, while we're still forwarding packets. So you could take this routing engine down during an upgrade, uh, bounce it, bring it back up. But the forwarding engine is still able uh, to forward packets during that time because it's essentially a completely autonomous um, system, if you would. It, it doesn't require the, it requires a routing engine for updates, but it doesn't require the routing engine to actually forward packets. Um, so, you know, you could do things like graceful routing engine switchover. Uh, you could do in-service software upgrades. And really, at the end of the day, this is really all about just cleanly separating these two components so that you can get the best performance as possible. Now, when we come back, I'll be covering other types of things. I'll be getting into more detail into the forwarding table, things like exception packets um, and how we forward traffic up between the routing engine and the PFE. Uh, we'll be covering all of that in future videos. So thanks for joining. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see additional videos as they come out and see you guys next time.